Hi, Anatomy students. Welcome to lab one of the course. Let's get started. Okay, so you have, if you're doing this way, the, the way I recommend, uh, you're doing it in order of what you see when you get to Canvas, okay? So you've watched the introductory videos, the syllabus video, you've done the lecture. If you haven't watched the lecture, rec um, uh, lecture yet, sorry, the lecture one yet, I highly recommend you go do that. It's going to assist you with the lab so much, okay? So definitely go watch that lecture, take notes, okay? And now it's time for lab one. So what is in lab one? Let's open the mystery link. When you get here, it's going to give you some instructions about how best to do this lab, okay? So you're going to download this lab, click this link, open it up, and you're going to see this Whoop, from here. Oh, it's 11 pages. That's so many pages. Ah, a lot of them are figures, so don't worry about it. But this lab is different from most of the labs that we do in that it's got several different working parts uh, of which you need all you need all of them in order to successfully complete this lab, okay? Okay, so this lab, as you go through it, really you're just learning a lot of different parts. Um, you're practicing with learning where all of these things are. Oh, by the way, anything that's bolded like this and has a bullet point, these are things that are fair game for the lab practicals. So the lab practicals, what they look like is you're going to have to identify um, excuse me, you're going to have to identify certain um, uh, anatomical features on models. So we don't, I, I haven't, I'm writing them to at least the first one tonight. And so we're going to, I haven't exactly figured out how that's going to look on a virtual situation. This is the first time we've had to do this. But basically, um, the idea is you'll have a picture. Oh, I know how I'm going to do it. Okay, it's all good. I have a bunch of pictures from old classes. And so it's going to be great. Uh, you'll have a picture and you'll be asked, is this, what kind of plane is this? And you'll all say, oh, it's a sagittal plane or it's the blah, blah, whatever. Um, the, or what, uh, if you look at the organs and we've divided the organs into their quadrants, doo -doo -doo -doo. where's quadrants, 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 oh, it's not on here. It's in the lecture. That's fine. Um, if we divide the abdominal pelvic cavity into its major quadrants, where is the liver found? And you'll say it's in the upper right and upper left quadrants. Oh, so easy. Um, and so you'll see again, more things you have to be able to identify where they are in a model. Okay, some more pictures. And then there's these practice pages at the end of the lab where you can actually practice these things. Can you label the following cavity using your list of structures? So if you were to look at this and you were to say, what is this thing? Oh, this is the thoracic cavity. It's not the lung. The lung exists within this cavity, but it's not there right now. What's this? Oh, it's actually not on our list of things you need to know, so don't worry about it. The idea is actually you're going to take the list of terms that you um, got from the lab, and what I recommend, what I have here, is I have written down everything that is in bold from the lab. Okay, so uh, these are the things I need to know exactly where they are, because guess what? There are millions of anatomical terms, okay? These are just, this is just the subset you need to know to be successful in this class, okay? So if I'm looking for specific cavities and membranes and I go back over to my lab, well, I know this is the thoracic, this is the abdominal cavity, this is the pelvic cavity. If I put these two together, that's the abdominal pelvic cavity. This is the cranial cavity. And then I can like get, do some more like, oh, what kind of questions could be asked here? Oh, well, this is a posterior cavity. Cavity, while this is a ventral cavity, okay? So this is where you get to practice yourself and see if you know the terms. Over here, here's the cranial cavity. This whole thing is the thoracic cavity. Here's my pleural cavities and my mediastatin or my pericardial cavity. Oh, look at me knowing so many things, okay? And that's what you're going to be doing. This is how you're going to practice. So what I recommend, especially for this lab, is as you go through and you're reading the things, you're making yourself a list of those bolded cavities. So go through and a lot of this is repeat from the uh, repeat from the lecture, but some of it maybe there's some extra things. For example, in the put it up, up, up. Here we go. In the directional terminology in the lecture, I don't really get into supine and prone. So to be supine is to be laying on your back. Okay, and to be prone is to be laying on your um, on your uh, on your nose, basically. Okay, so the idea is we talk about this when we talk about hands. So if your hand is supine, it's like you could cup some soup in it. If it's prone, it's upside down. It's supine, prone. I don't. That was just the easiest way for students in the past to remember it. Okay, remember that we've talked about these. Da, da, da. Oh, uh, superficial versus deep. 
if you have a superficial wound, that means it's in the skin. It's very, um, it's very near the surface. If you have a deep wound, that means it's deep in the body. It's way in there. Okay. It's deep. It's like diving into a deep pool to be deep is to be far towards the bottom. Okay. So these are things that weren't men mentioned in the lecture, but are required for the lab practical. Okay. Again, some more bolded terms, some more definitions of what those things are. Make sure you, and then all of these things, these are so many things, but actually you, in this, you don't have to know what they do. You just have to know how to find them on a model. And what I would do is practice by looking at so many different figures, like Google uh, blank anatomical figure and see if you could find where are the ovary and testes? Where is the scrotum? Where is the kidney? Where's the ureter? And you don't, right now you don't have to know what they do. You just have to know where to find them. Okay. Again, here are some more practice questions. Da, da, da. My favorite are these, where you have to put in the anatomical directions. The lungs are blank to the stomach. Well, here's the lungs. The stomach is down here. So the lungs are above, but we don't say above in anatomical terminology. We say superior, or you could say cranial, because it's getting closer to the head, okay? The thumb is blank to the, oh, I don't want to give all of it away, but the thumb is blank to the fingers. Now, remember, you have to do all of these things in anatomical positioning. That means you're standing straight up, your thumbs are pointed out, so they're pointed laterally, okay? So they're, you're not standing like this, you're standing like this, basically. This is, I could stand up, but you know. Uh, and so if the thumb is pointed away from the body, that means it is lateral to the fingers. But you could also say it's proximal to the fingers because it is go if it is closer to the body than the fingers are if you go up the extremity. Okay, so there's some of these have a couple different answers. Interesting. Uh, da, da, da. okay, so cool. This is all pra this is all information for you to keep for the practical, and it's practice questions. So what am I actually turning in, Noel? And why did you skip the first two parts? Good question. Uh, in this lab, you're also going to have two introductory parts, which are on the uh, on hand on lab safety. Okay, because again, normally we would be doing this in the lab. Um, so in that uh, in that case, we'd be able to tell you, okay, here's what you do in case of emergency. Here's what you have to have on in the lab at all times. But since we don't get to have that, but we still want to remind you that when you do get into an anatomy lab, you will be working with chemicals. You'll be working with uh, possibly cadavers if you take that class. And um, so we want to make sure that you are able to do these things and keep them in mind and also just their general good practice like hand washing okay so for uh when you go so how do you find these you find these by when you are ba, ba, ba. hello hello here we go so we le lecture one lab one lab safety hand washing when you click this it opens up this picture this part of your uh um online module okay so the the canvas uh sorry not canvas the mcgraw hill connect your textbook basically and every lab simulation that goes through mcgraw hill is going to give you some keys concept again it's very good for your brain to write these things down okay don't just be like mm, got it done and then leave okay it's good it's in this kind of lab where you're like oh yeah i know how to wash my hands hello okay fine but if in another lab where you're actually doing some sort of an experiment like the osmosis lab that's next it's actually better for you to kind of um write these things down as you're doing them okay okay uh and then it tells you an overview here it especially in hand washing it's very important to do them in the right order and for the right number of times so when you do that you'll click on the simulation and it'll go through and it walks you through exactly what you need to do there's a tutorial you can do as well that kind of tells you how the labs work you don't necessarily have to do it i will give you extra points if you do do them for some extra credit so that's fun uh the other one you have to do for this is so you have to do hand washing and you have to do the personal safety let's put that up here Okay, so personal safety, that is the other lab, and that's all about how do you work in an anatomy lab, okay, so what do you, not do you work, but like how can you be safe and protect yourself and others while in an anatomy lab, so literally you just saw me touch my face, we can't do that, let's not do, you especially can't do that in a lab, because you could have stuff on your hands that you're then put, like chemicals you're putting on your body, if uh, normally when we do this lab, you're working with dissected cats, and so if you're dissecting a cat and then you touch your face, ugh, I've just got dissected cat on my face, that's the worst. Uh, it's not the worst, but it's definitely not great. Okay, so how do we keep ourselves 
yourself safe in the lab. That's what this is going to tell you. Now, when I was doing this and I was playing around with it, I was very confused, like, what, how do I, but, but literally you just read the instructions to the side. Zoom in on the lab bench. Let's move this over. Zoom in on the lab bench to view the items and then see what seems dangerous. So if we go over here, you don't even necessarily have to know what all these things are, but if it looks like something that's probably dangerous, it's probably going to be something that you need to, know, you know, protect yourself from. So when you're going through this, and if you don't get it right, like let's say which one of the following is dangerous. I think it's the rat, and I decide that's my answer. Dun, da, da. Oh no, it's not the complete answer, but it is part of the answer. So wait, it lets you do it again until you get it correct, okay? Uh, as you're doing, so this is actually, what. how many of these things are dangerous? Uh, the dissection tray is not dangerous, okay? It's just a tray, but the rat and the beaker, all of these things could be dangerous. So a scalpel is a knife that you use to cut dissection things, so that's dangerous. The rat could have chemicals. The beaker could break, and the glass could hurt you. Uh, I have a friend who literally just cut off her thumb because she had a bottle of vinegar, like fancy balsamic vinegar. Uh, she dropped it, and uh, it, she reached for the glass pieces, and a huge piece of glass just went right through her thumb. A nice little transverse cut there. Uh, uh, okay. Oh no, Park. It's speaker is mm. okay. So apparently this does not believe in. It's fine. We'll just keep going. Correct. Yay, now I can do the next thing. The next thing, look at the student's shoes. Why is it bad to wear fancy sandals in the lab? Oh, because you could drop stuff on them. Cool, good. Now, uh, what should I do? How do I get through? Oh, so, but, but what should not be brought? So the thing is you have to do this in order or it won't let you go on. So I want to change her shoes, but, but first I have to tell her no drink for you. Now she's all sassy and mad, but it's cool. Now put on your shoes, put on your lab coat. What else can we do to make her more safe? Oh, look, here's some goggles and some gloves. Cool. Now, I can look at the shoes. They're safe. Am I done? I'm going to click go on to phase two. Oh, no. I Something. I, what have, Oh, yeah. What are, The one thing that people tend to forget in the lab, is, is, which I literally just did, is to put your hair up. You have to put your hair up. I have definitely seen labs where people are working with Bunsen burners, and they turn really fast. And you could be someone who doesn't have long hair, but if you're working with someone who does, you want them to put their hair up. Because if they suddenly turn really fast, and they're hair gets on fire and then they whip their hair again they're now going to get you on fire okay or just set other things on fire very dangerous etc okay so then you just you keep walking through this lab until you're done and then it tells you you're done uh, and you get your points okay excellent why do i care about this why am i making you do this because they're all part of your lab questions so that's what you actually turn in so that you are complete with this lab so the lab questions ba -ba -ba, here um this is uh the there's about 50 questions and they go through everything from the lab and the little tutorials okay so this is where you're actually getting graded on accuracy now you get to do these twice Okay, so if you do it once and you fail or you don't like your grade, you can do it again. But it's best to do it uh, correctly the first time because the assignments in this class are going to start building up. You're going to have three or four labs due just this week. And most weeks you're going to have like four labs and a test um, in the same week because the summer class goes so fast. Okay, um, but I know you can do it. That's why you signed up for this class because you are willing to take on the challenge and you're willing to learn and I believe in you. Remember, you can always contact me through email m-n-o-e-l at mpc.edu or come to office hours at 3 p.m. Okay, I believe in you. Let me know if you have any questions.